we had seen the introduction to Hanuman Chalisa, a very popular text chanted, taken support of by many devotees. Something in which if we can build our Shraddha, build our faith, that devotee can benefit more and more from such a text. We saw the introduction through the life of Goswami Tulsidas Ji. We had a candid conversation with Goswami Ji and he said, what are those things which he can share from his life? The first thing was, no matter which experience we go through, none of it should make us bitter. And even when things are going good, making sure we don't forget our goal, we don't start going in some other direction. All these were based on Goswamiji's life. Huh? In the beginning how he had a difficult childhood. He said in spite of that difficulty, he was not bitter about anything. Then the second one was, when things were good, when he came back, got little distracted. So there he says, make sure that we don't forget our goal at any point. And the last one, whenever we start doing something new, there will be a lot of opposition, a lot of critics, not to get overwhelmed by those critics. That was when people tried to burn his work, Ramcharit Manas, because it was in Avadi Bhasha. But none of it affected him. He says, if Bhagwan wants something to be accomplished, it will be. If he doesn't want, there is no way we can make it happen. Hari Chha Bhalwan, it is so powerful, we cannot do it otherwise. And if it, meant, if it is meant to happen, nobody can stop it also. That is the Sarva Shakti, Sarva Shakti Maan, Guna of Bhagwan. If he gives something and he wants to give something, no jiva can say no. That jiva has to accept it. He says that is the power of the Lord. Surrendering unto that power, all saints became stress free. He said after karma is done, why hold on to so much about how this karma is going to turn out? If he wants it to be this way, it will be this way. If it is some other way, in that also they see Mangalam. Mangalam means auspiciousness. In which result? In that result which is different from what they wanted. That person is a devotee who can have this kind of a mindset, this kind of a vision. Then we saw the Mangala Charanam, Buddhi Hina Tanu Janike, not that one, the first one. Shri Guru Charana Sarojaraja Nija Manu Mukura Sudhari. With the dust of the feet of my teacher, Goswamiji says, I clean the mirror of my mind. And with that pure mind, I am going to start elaborating the glory of Raghubhara. Who is Raghubhara? Hanumanji. Hanumanji, the one who was not different from Bhagwan Rama. That Hanumanji, I am going to start elaborating his glories. Jodayaku Phalachari. One who is so powerful, he can bring everything in my life. Our rishis, whenever they make categories, they make categorization after a lot of thinking. <coughs> they say, whatever we might ask in our life will fall on, only in these four categories. Either it is Kama, or it is Artha, or it is Dharma, or Moksha. Kama itself is so broad, it includes everything. Desire for well-being, desire for anything of this world, everything is included in Kama. For Kama, I need Artha. For Kama, I need resources, that is Artha Purushartha. <coughs> to keep Artha and Kama in check, I need Dharma. What is it that will govern my quest for resources and quest for desires. Dharma will govern it. 
दैट इज ए थर्ड पुरुषार्थ एंड इफ समबडी हेज लिव्ड अ धार्मिक लाइफ भगवान ब्लेसेस देम विद दिस क्वेस्ट फॉर मोक्ष एंड हनुमान जी इज सो पावरफुल ही कैन ब्रिंग ऑल ऑफ इट टू एस जो दायकू फलचारी I don't have to go far. Kama purushartha to somebody, artha purushartha to somebody else, then dharma to somebody and moksha to somebody. You know the main theme here is whoever is our ishta devata. That ishta devata is so powerful, they can bring whatever we are seeking. Later there is one chaupai, aura devata chittana dharai, hanumata sehi. सर्व सुख कराई और देवता चित्त न धराई गोस्वामी जी सिंग हु एवर वी हैव सरेंडर टू होल्ड ऑन टू देम डोंट चेंज राइट अवे इफ आई वॉन्ट नॉलेज आई विल गो समवेयर इफ आई वॉन्ट धनम आई विल गो समवेयर एल्स इफ आई वॉन्ट मोक्ष आई विल गो थर्ड प्लेस इसे देन अवर भक्ति इज नॉट राइप एंड मीनिंग वेन वी सरेंडर टू एन ऑल्टर and remain focused there that ripens our proximity to that altar that ripens our closeness to our ishta devata and that surrender rewards in that way it is keeping that in mind he says you can go everywhere means even if you go to different altar the bhava is this is my same bhagwan who is appearing here you know during uh, krishna avatar time Hanuman ji is one of the Chiranjeevis, right? So he was there. Bhagwan Krishna, he comes to give darshan to Hanuman ji, and then he remembers, if I come as Bhagwan Krishna, it is very hard to convince Hanuman ji that I am Bhagwan. He has to come as Dhanurdhari, Bhagwan Rama only. meaning whichever altar he sees he sees his own ishta devata in that altar that is the bhavana and it is so powerful it will bring whatever we are seeking then we also saw why we do mangala charanam because there are four chances or four possibilities of limitations creeping into our work the first one is called as brahma brahma you know simpler example is you tell somebody to get something from the grocery store you told one thing person brought something else and he is convinced that this is what you told me whatever other thing he brought right that is called as brahma means you heard something understood something else then you went and did that thing that is called as brahma like that in scriptures also it can happen or in any work it can happen we have heard something but understood totally opposite and very confidently we say you know this is what it is so brahma should not be there that is why we do mangala charanam if mind is impure there is a high chance of brahma being present second one is pramada pramada means inadvertence i heard what i should bring from the market but i forgot i forgot it's it different from the first one right i heard and i misunderstood i brought but something else i brought but pramada is i heard and i forgot that is pramada so in any work that we are composing if you are not alert then we might fall short in many places what i should have done i did not do left few things incomplete that should not happen that is why mangala charanam is done third one was called as karana patava karana patava means our instruments are not sharp instruments are not sharp to grasp whatever we are hearing whatever we are absorbing sometimes tamoguna comes in this mind that time we realize how helpless we are you know if mind 
is feeling sleepy, no matter how hard you try, it just takes us off. So that lack of sharpness in sense organs, that is called as Karana Patava. Means you did not hear only what was told to get from the supermarket. You did not, not that you forgot or you understood something else. Out of whatever things were told, you did not hear at all what was told. That is Karana Patava. And last one is Vipralipsa. Means you had some conflict with the person who is telling you and purposely you got something else. <laughs> that is called as Vipralipsa. Means our own likes and dislikes have creeped in and same subject we are using for our own likes and dislikes. So it can happen that we compose some work, elaborate some work, and establish some other point totally which is unconnected with Vedanta. Some social topic, some political topic. Because I have Vipralipsa. Vipralipsa means I have bias. That bias will make sure I am not doing justice to that topic. So whenever we do Mangala Charanam, It is said our mind should become free from all these four defects. Brahma, Pramada, Karana Patava, and Vipralipsa. And this is true for any work, huh? not only spiritual work. Wherever we are placed in life, whatever thing has come on our plate. If either of these four are there, then that work is not up to the mark. if Vipralipsa comes in between. You say you wrote a nice report, but you say this is not unbiased report. Brahma is there. You say you have written very nicely, but that is not what it is. Pramada, you failed to see certain aspects in that work. Means I should have seen all aspects, but few things, there was Pramada, I left it out. So that is our prayer. And Bhagwan, please remove these four defects. There is one more point also to this. No human composition can be free from these four defects entirely. If something is composed by a human being, it will have some touch of Brahma, some Pramada, some Karna Patava, some Vipralipsa. If it is free from all four, it will become Veda Mantra. We say whatever Upanishads are revealed, they are not compositions of human intellect. They were revelations to those rishis who had a very pure mind and they meditated upon, meditated upon that truth. To those rishis, these mantras were revealed. That is why we say Upanishad mantras are not Paurusheya mantra, they are Apaurusheya. So, Aparushaya means that which is free from Brahma, Pramada, Karna, Patava and Vipralipsa. All four of it. That is why it becomes Pramana. If that was also somebody's opinion, like that you will have so many opinions. Everybody will say, nature of truth according to me is this. Whom will you listen to? Whom will you accept as Pramana? and whom will you reject? And we know how our mind works. Today our conviction is something. 10 years later you ask the same person, what is your conviction? He said, it has evolved. And you invested all your energy for moksha into such a conviction, and his conviction evolves. What will you hold on to? That is why in Vedanta, individual opinion doesn't count at all. Who is speaking? that doesn't count. What is the pramana with which he is speaking? What is the means of knowledge holding on to which he is speaking? If it is Upanishads, then that speech becomes pramanika. The moment you step out from Upanishads and say, this is my opinion, you say, very good, we appreciate it, but that opinion is not pramana. It is said, whichever tributary is connected to Gangaji, 
you can take a dip there. But the moment the tributary is cut off, it doesn't remain a pilgrimage spot anymore. So that first verse actually is a reminder of Sampradaya. Baranao Raghubara Bimala Jasu Joda Yaku Palachari. Goswamiji says, may this work be so pure that it doesn't remain as a individual's composition. May Bhagwan's divinity shine through this. May those who recite this with bhakti get the palashruti of such a text. The moment Jeeva's likes and dislike comes, the palashruti part goes down. But minus likes and dislikes, even if such a saint scolds somebody, that thing becomes sotram. Right? We had seen this in Kenopanishad class. Bhajagovindam was a scolding. But minus Brahma, Pramahada, Karanapatava, and Vipralipsa. That brings the divinity to it. And if it can happen for Upanishad mantras, that becomes a revelation. Okay, now the second one, second Doha. Buddhi Natanujanike Sumirau Pavana Kumar Balabuddhi Vidya Dehu Mohi Arahu Kale Sabikar Buddhi Natanujanike हनुमान की जय उमापति महादेव की जय बोलो भाई सब संतन की जय श्री सतगुरुनाथ महाराज की जय सेकंड मंगलाचरणम इस गोस्वामी जी इस प्रेयिंग टू भगवान ही सेस दिस इस हाउ आई लुक एट माय सेल्फ भगवान सेस हाउ डू यू लुक एट योर सेल्फ बुद्धि ही न तनु जाने के I am a person who doesn't have many abilities, doesn't have a lot of buddhi. That is how I look at myself. If you don't have buddhi, then how will you compose Hanuman Chalisa? How are you going to sing Glories of Hanuman Ji? He says, even if I, have, I don't have buddhi, I can do one more thing. Sumirao Pavana Kumar. I can sincerely remember Hanuman Ji. Oh, you can remember him. What will you do? Bala buddhi vidya dehu mohi. Bhagwan is the abode of everything. Whatever I want, he can give me that. To accomplish any work, it is said we need three things. One is the know-how of how to get that work done. Right? The theoretical knowledge, that's how they say. Simple thing, even if you want to make some recipe or you want to make some dish. <coughs> if I want to make a dish, what is the first thing I know? Vidya of that recipe. But having known that, there are several points where I have to use my own buddhi. Everything will not be said in that recipe. Little bit of things, I have to do it on my own. So I need Vidya, I need Buddhi, and there will be several obstacles in between. Cooking also and otherwise also. <laughs> several obstacles are there, for that I need Balam. Means that obstacle should not be so overpowering that we drop our goal. He says all three things Hanumanji's grace, remembrance will bring. It will bring Vidya also. It will bring buddhi also, how to implement it. And it will also bring me balam to face those challenges which are going to come in between. Now, isn't this true for any project that we take? 
wherever we are placed, you say, I want to accomplish this thing. What is the duration? Six months. You say, first thing you need is Vidya. How are you going to accomplish it? A lot of planning they do. All hands on deck meeting, they call. But after that, I need Buddhi also. Plan is not sufficient. Right? Several places I'll have to keep thinking, keep improvising. What do they call? Thinking on the feet or something they say, right? Thinking off of your feet. And in addition to that, there are so many other challenges which are stopping me from outside. That Balam, he says, comes from my Bhagwan. If he has placed me there, there is a reason why he placed me there. And if I am available, he will make me able. That is Guruji's statement. He says, God looks for availability, not ability. If we are available, Bala Buddhi Vidya, he will give. If we say, I am okay on my own, I don't need his help. He says, you can take care. That option also is there, but he say when a better option is available, why go for this other option? Bala buddhi vidya dehu muhi harahu kalesa bikara. You know what this means is, even if we get bala buddhi vidya minus Bhagwan, that kind of bala buddhi vidya brings lot of inner agitation. Because I am responsible for maintaining it. I am responsible for implementing it. Everything I have taken in my hand. And Jiva is so tiny, how many things can he handle? He says, such kind of Bala Buddhi Vidya brings lot of agitation. <coughs> Let Bhagwan take care of it. Let Bhagwan give it. The thing is, even if we don't want, the one who is really giving is Bhagwan only. Devotee is the one who will appreciate it. You know, one of my favorite story about this is of a small boy whose mother would keep sandwich in the fridge every day. Now this boy would come from school, open the fridge, eat the sandwich. Then one day mother said, you know, today I am unable to come in the afternoon. I have some other work I have to attend. So I will tell your aunt to make sandwich. This boy said, mother, why do you need aunt to make? Doesn't the sandwich come from the fridge? <laughs> he thought he can open the fridge, take the sandwich and eat. That sandwich comes from fridge. That is how we feel about our abilities. Huh? We are blessed with ability to think, ability to work, ability to implement. And if somebody asks us, where do these abilities come from? From fridge. <laughs> from my own intellect, I am a self-made man. It is good to have this power, but we should appreciate that everything which is seen in Vyashti has to come from Samashti. Everything which is seen in part, really speaking, belongs to the whole. And if we can seek from it, he says, we will be stress-free. Bala buddhi vidya dehu muhi harahu kalesa vikara. The first line is actually interesting. If you just look at it from a common person's standpoint, what will that person say? You see, you are lacking in confidence. You are going to start something new and you say you are buddhihina, balahina. Be strong. Yes, many of you are nodding. <laughs> see, whenever saints express this bhavana of weakness, of being small, they express this only in front of Bhagwan, not in front of world. And sometimes sadhakas do the opposite. 
in front of world we are very generous you know we keep asking so many things in front of bhagwan he says i am good by myself i don't need to ask anything from bhagwan so path of devotion is flipping it around and it is so beautiful that if we can bring this bhavana of dinata dinata means helplessness that becomes bhushanam not dushanam that becomes an ornamentation for the devotee it doesn't become a shortcoming for the devotee in anything feeling of this helplessness becomes a reason for sharanagati this ramanuja charya ji has said ha huh? out of the six things which are needed for sharanagati he says one of the main quality is having dinatva bhavana in ourselves if that is not there this jiva will never surrender to ishvara he will always feel i am good by myself i don't need bhagwan's help but even when he feels that way one who is helping is bhagwan only ha huh? that is his beauty so this point we had seen earlier about mana when i start elaborating it you'll remember oh yes 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 you had seen this mana dhatu is mana word is made of the word made of the dhatu ma ma means to measure if you measure something precisely that is called as pramana that thing which helps us measure something precisely is called as pramana in measuring weight what is the pramana weighing scale you cannot say i will see this thing and i will know how heavy it is eyes are not pramana there like this if you can measure something precisely everything will have its own pramana okay the mana word is clear right mana means to measure measuring ourselves with respect to some of our ability some or the other ability that is called as abhimana abhitah mana it is if i have lot of strength and i measure myself based upon my strength it is said and i say i am better than this other person because i have more strength than this person that means i have abhimana of my strength take any ability ha huh? if i can play harmonium that is one ability and whatever i am measuring myself with respect to that ability that is called as abhimana now if it is in good context if it is with the right spirit that abhimana is called as swabhimana abhimana is not always a bad thing if you are having abhimana of being a sadhaka so that abhimana is called as swabhimana if somebody criticizes sadhana somebody criticizes scriptures either answer with whatever best knowledge we have or walk away from that place who said this satiji tells in ramcharitmanas kaatiya tasu jeev jo basai shravand mundi nahi pariya chalai when daksha prajapati he is insulting lord shiva she says when such a thing happens either you respond appropriately as a sadhaka whatever is the right perspective you can give if you feel you are not samartha over there then you can just walk out that is called as swabhimana means person who is devotee is not a weakling he says he has swabhimana about whatever he values in life now the problem becomes when we take this mana too seriously and we identify ourselves only with those things 
whatever ability it is. Huh? So it is said if you make a scale, one to 10. So what is your opinion about yourself on this scale of one to 10? In general, as a person, what is your opinion? Or let us say, make it more specific, public speaking. What is your opinion about this? You say, I rate myself at 9.5. That is my opinion about my public speaking skill. And world rates you at 3.5. <laughs> Mine was 9.5, world rated me at 3.5. So that gap between 9.5 and 3.5 is called as Appamana. Same mana it is. Huh? I took upon that as my only identity. And in my own eyes, I had it at 9.5. If you notice this point, we will appreciate why traditional teachers are very, very strict. Other people might praise the singer, but teacher will never praise. And this student feels, you know, see all of them are telling me I sing so well. I wish my teacher understood. <laughs> when Bali her ch child told me that, he said, you said, you know, the song was nice. I wish my teacher understood this. <laughs> Because they know that for a child to grow, they can't rate themselves at 9.5 on the first day. Although parents might feel like it, friends might feel like it. So that gap is called as apamana. But let us say I rate myself at six. And after your presentation is done, everybody gets up and gives a standing ovation. <coughs> Means world gave 9.5. That gap between 9.5 and 6 is called as sammana. You feel very happy. So finally my hard work, somebody is recognizing. That is called as sammana. Now the beauty of a devotee is, in front of the world, he will always start with his rating in his own eyes as 1 on the lowest scale. Why? Because he says the one who is really doing it is Bhagwan. One who has really given it is Bhagwan. Why should I unnecessarily take his rating? Bhagwan's rating is 10. That's why he is Bhagwan, right? Perfect in everything. But he says my rating in my eyes is 1. Then see the beauty what it has done to his mind. Nobody in this world can insult such a person. Nobody in this world can disappoint such a person. If somebody comes to Goswamiji and says, you are a composition, it is not very great. He says, I know. Buddhi hina tanu I only said. <laughs> what new thing are you telling me? And you see in our own life, wherever we have gone, with this high rating or high expectation. It could be with our own near and dear ones, our own relatives, or at work. More is the vulnerability to get disappointed. So Bhakti Darshana, that is the first message. He says the sadhaka goes in different places with no expectations. And no wish list that these things should happen in the same way. I am going after so long. They did not even talk to me. He said, so what? So what? Or whatever other expectation he has, they should have done this, they should have done that. He says, nothing doing. And the beauty is, his competence is very much intact. Because he rates himself at one, doesn't mean he's incompetent in the world. You look at Goswamiji's compositions, everything is so beautiful. He has gotten the best of both. Very, very efficient and competent in the world. At the same time, mind free of any kind of hang-ups from the world outside. That is the Chaupai, Buddhi Hina Tanujani Ke, Sumirao Pavana Kumara. 
ಬಲಬುದ್ಧಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾದೇಹುಮುಹಿ ಅರಹು ಕಲೇಸ ಬಿಕಾರ ಸಿ ಪವನ್ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಅನದರ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪವನ್ ದೇವತ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಪವನ್ ದೇವತ ಹಿಸ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಹಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೂವ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಅಂತರಿಕ್ಷ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೂವ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಗೋ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಮಾಲೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾರ್ನರ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ರೂಮ್ ವಿಂಡ್ ಗಾರ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಅನದರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಪವನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮೀರ ಸಮೀರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ಈರಿಯತೆ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬ್ಲೆಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ಎನಿವೇರ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪವನ್ ದೇವತ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಜಿ ಒನ್ ಮಹಾತ್ಮ ಜಿ ಉಡ್ಸೆ ಇಸ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಮೇ ರಹನ ಹೈ ತೋ ನಮಕ್ ಕೆ ತರ ರಹೋ ನಮಕ್ ಕೆ ತರ ರಹೋ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಲಿವ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಲಿವ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸಾಲ್ಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ನೋ ಬಡಿ ನೋಟಿಸಸ್ ಮೋಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಸಾಲ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಭಾವನಾ ಆಫ್ ಪವನ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಸುಂದರ್ ಕಾಂಡ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಜೀಸ್ ಪರ್ಸ್ನಾಲಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ನೋ ಬಡಿ ನೋಟಿಸಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ವಾಯಿಟ್ಲಿ ಹಿ ಡಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಎಮ್ ವಿ ಪಿ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿ ಟೀಮ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೋಮೆಂಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಓಕೆ ನಾವು ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಚೌಪಾಯಿ ಜಯ ಹನುಮಾನ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಗುಣ ಸಾಗರ ಜಯ ಹನುಮಾನ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಗುಣ ಜಯ ಕಪಿ ಸತಿ ಹುಲೋಕ ಉಜಾಗರ ಜಯ ಕಪಿ ಸತಿ ಹುಲೋಕ ಜಯ ಹನುಮಾನ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಗುಣ ಸಾಗರ ಜಯ ಕಪಿ ಸತಿ ಹುಲೋಕ ಉಜಾಗರ the verses in hanuman chalisa they don't have a sequential flow of thought it is a stuti out of inspiration <coughs> goswami is composing so one verse you will find is just stuti another verse you will find is from sundar kand then suddenly he comes to kishkinda kand then goes to lanka kand so it's a camera he is moving across ramcharit manas there is no one particular sequence as such this verse is just a glory of hanuman ji ಜಯ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಬಿ ಟು ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಜಿ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಗುಣ ಸಾಗರ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಅಬೋರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಓಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸಾಗರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಹನುಮಾನ್ ಜಿಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ನೋಬಡಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಫ್ಯಾದಮ್ ಜನರಲಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಿಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಕಾರ್ಡ್ ರೈಟ್ ಹೌ ಮೆನಿ ಡಿಗ್ರೀಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ here i don't think we have that much sometimes other places you have longer visiting cards you see that is the limit of my knowledge you can't ask me any other subject but hanuman ji is jnana guna sagar jnana sagar means what is his depth what is the vastness of his knowledge nobody can fathom the sanskrit vyakaranam we study is called as paniniya vyakaranam like this there are nine forms of vyakarana and hanuman ji is one of the title is nava vyakarana pandit and the first time he meets bhagwan rama the speech with which he welcomes bhagwan in valmiki ramayana there is an elaborate section where bhagwan rama is praising the speech of hanuman ji he says if somebody is speaking like this flawless in his sentences and the metaphors and words that he is using he said he cannot be somebody ordinary he has studied all the four vedas that person has to be veda with that was our hanuman ji that is his gnanam do you know hanuman ji also has composed ramayana there is a story that goes that he also composed ramayana and one day he was going in a boat 
in a river and this boatsman who is there he reads it and he said this is so beautiful if somebody reads this nobody will read valmiki ramayana hanuman ji says is that it takes it and puts it in the water that is his bhava he says valmiki rishi is my teacher he is the one who composed ramayana i have no desire to compete with him and the famous story all of us know once bhagwan rama asks hanuman ji what is our relationship this is after ramayana huh? hanuman ji is sitting i mean after bhagwan has come back from lanka generally uttar kanda people don't read one of our samaji would say villain is gone <laughs> lanka kanda ramayana is dead uttar kanda nobody is interested kakabushundi garudji samvad so much of beauty is there he says this is uttar kanda part where hanuman ji is sitting in the garden outside bhagwan rama comes and says hanuman ji tell me what is our sambandha you see hanuman ji is gnana sagara huh? he says deha buddhya tu dasoham bhagwan from the standpoint of this body i am your dasa however you want to use this body you use you tell me to go to lanka i will go you tell me to do anything over here this is i am your dasa as far as the sharira is concerned jeeva buddhya to amshakah from the standpoint of mind you are the totality i am the part from the standpoint of mind you have seen a jigsaw puzzle right it has a big image and everything you can say is amsha of that that big puzzle is amshi and every small thing is amsha he says like that you are the big picture and my mind is a small tiny bit in that big picture jeeva buddhya tu amshakah so may it stay tuned this is the main teaching of shiva sankalpa suktam tanme manah shiva sankalpam astu this is may it remain tuned then atma buddhya tameva from the standpoint of consciousness there is no difference between you and me from chaitanya standpoint i am you alone deha buddhya tu dasoham jeeva buddhya tu amshaka atma buddhya tameva iti me nishchita mati hi i don't have any doubts in this this is my clear knowledge this is one sign of jnana sagara when there is no ambiguity there is no doubt several points we saw huh? why hanuman ji is jnana sagara now vyakarana pandit he is the speech that he welcomes bhagwan rama with and his mastery over vedanta at the same time jnana sagara alone is not sufficient one has to be guna sagara also means he has lot of beautiful values which makes him very very special in general if you are working in a team let us say 20% or let's say 1% doing majority of the work how will that person feel is i have done all the work nobody else did many things to accomplish that work same thing happened with all vanaras southern team that had gone everybody was there but everybody had some or the other challenge angad ji was losing enthusiasm somebody else was going somewhere else hanuman ji alone accomplished everything for that team but before he jumps the ocean he tells everybody else all of you stay back we have come as a team when we go back to bhagwan we will go back as a team he didn't say none of you did anything you all go back now <laughs> i will come and i will report to bhagwan that is his guna sagara 
and entire Hanuman Chalice actually is Guna of Hanumanji only, more will come. See, the thing is, between these two things, right, Jnana and Guna, it is said even if somebody doesn't have Jnana, it is okay. If that person has Guna, that Guna will bring Jnana. I was recently talking to a sadhaka. She said, nowadays in all the school districts, the whole discussion is around how do we inculcate values in children? How do we teach them so that they're more compassionate? How they are blending well into the society, feel like giving back to the society. She said, entire two years I was part of the school district very little discussion on how to increase their grades. And it's a good thing because it's happening anyway. They are working hard, curriculum, everything is in place. But it's a beautiful compliment. Along with Jnanam, if we can have Guna. The litmus test of Guna is, we feel like spending time with that person. That is a simple litmus test of guna. You didn't have any hair splitting logic, hair splitting discussion, some scientific discussion topic, nothing was there. But you just spent time, you felt good. That is the virtue of guna. On the other hand, you might have had a very hair splitting discussion. But when you walked away, you felt more agitated. That is the difference where we have Jnana plus Guna. So Hanumanji's personality is such, where there is lot of Jnana, but along with these values. Jaya Kapisa, victory to the one who is king of monkeys. But real king of monkeys was who? Sugriva. But the title of Kapisa goes to Hanumanji. Means one who could rule everybody through their heart. You know, great quality for a leader. One is external force, which doesn't stay too long. The day this leader retires, everybody around goes away. Yavat vitto parjana saktaha, tavan nija parivaro saktaha. Paschat jivati. Paschat is post that ability has gone away. But for somebody who has ruled through heart, he doesn't have to go through vartam kopina pruchati gehe. Because his ruling was not external, his ruling was through the heart. In the kingdom of Hiranyakashapu, who was the king? Hiranyakashapu only. <laughs> In the kingdom of Hiranyakashapu, king was Hiranyakashapu. But the one who ruled over people's heart was not Hiranyakashapu. That was Prahladji. Whatever Prahladji said, all of them followed. See, that is one facet of Shraddha. Shraddha can never come towards somebody who is adharmic. Shraddha, really speaking, in a person's heart, means true Shraddha can never come in a person who is adharmic. This was the transforming point in Valmiki Rishi's life. Huh? He was doing all sorts of things to take care of family. But when he asked his own family members, he said, they don't have any kind of reverence for the work that I'm doing. <coughs> he said, that you know, was life of Valmiki Rishi. But we'll come back to our main thing. Jaya Kapi Satihu Loka Ujagara. Even if you take Ravana, in the kingdom of Ravana, who was the king? Ravana. Ravana. But the one who ruled over people's heart was Vibhishanji. Like that it is Hanumanji, Jaya Kapisa. And even if you think in our own life, 
to try to remember names of five presidents, past presidents. Huh? It's very hard, unless you're too much into political topics, very difficult. <coughs> but try to remember the names of persons who have stood by us in difficult times. You see, that is very easy. They ruled through our heart. External rulers were there, so many came and went. But they were not real kings. And if such person is there, Tihu Loka Ujagar. Means Hanumanji's fame is spread all over. If personality blossoms, that person doesn't have to advertise about his fame. Even if he doesn't want it, goes out. Gurudev would say, the moment a flower blossoms, even in the remotest hills of Himalayas, the bee has to go there to pollinate, pollinate to get that nectar and to pollinate that flower. Bee has to go. Flower never advertised. And he says, if there is no bee, let us say, Bhagwan Vishnu will take permission from Lakshmi Devi. He says, just give me 10 minutes, I have some work. <laughs> take the form of a bee and he will go there and come. Jaya kapi satihu loka ujagara. Person who has blossomed, that great bhakta of Bhagwan, somebody like Hanumanji, his glory is spread all over. Jaya kapi satihu loka ujagara. Next chapai, we will see later. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om